Yo, what's up guys? This is Jason checking back in. Thanks for tuning into the YouTube channel. Uh, today, we're just gonna talk about my initial thoughts on the Hammer Performance 1250 kit. Uh, I am currently running the break-in period right now. I have about, after this video, I had about uh, 150 miles racked up, so about 350 more miles to go. Uh, I just wanted to give some initial thoughts and impressions before uh, I, I, you know, finish the, the break-in period. And I thought it might be very helpful for you guys who are thinking about getting the 1250 kit to understand what you can expect, what the differences are, what I've noticed. So let's get right into it, all right? All right, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the sound difference from before and after. So the first time that I turned on the engine, I just noticed that the rumble rumble or the potato potato sound just was a lot faster, I think due to the increase in compression. I could be wrong on that, but that's what it sounded like to me. It, to me, it also sounded very much louder in comparison to my stock 883 with the stage one kit. So that was the immediate difference that I noticed, just turning on the engine, complete different sound, it sounded more aggressive, sounded angrier to me, uh, which are all good things, I'm not gonna complain. It would probably make sense to do a sound comparison, so probably in the next day or two, I'm gonna record the sound of, uh, of the engine with the 1250 kit, and I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison so we can really see the difference between the 1250 kit with the Stage 1 kit and the 883 stock with the Stage 1 kit. But to me, I did notice a big difference when starting the engine of the 1250 kit. The second thing I wanted to talk about was just the speed in comparison to before and after. Full disclosure, the highest RPM range that I took the bike during the braking period was about 4,000. So I didn't really have a chance to throttle the, the engine at all, but I could tell the bike was just much, much faster. The bike just was quicker off the line and had much more available torque. The bike just wants to move forward, whereas before I felt like I was really just pushing the bike with the throttle. I was able to hit 60 to 70 miles per hour much faster and in lower gears, whereas before, you know, anything above 50 miles an hour, like I was basically in fifth gear and topping out. Also cruising at higher speeds, I noticed became a little bit more comfortable for me. Um, you know, there were some stretches of, of uh, roads where I hit 70 miles an hour and I felt like I was cruising. And I think I might have been in fourth or fifth gear at that point. Also, this is a strange feeling, but the bike actually feels lighter to me in a sense. And it feels easier to throw around, I think just because you have the added horsepower. And so the bike is just moving much more nimble, um, if that makes sense. Third point. Uh, I noticed a lot more vibration, very similar to the sound. I think, you know, uh, there's just a lot more to things happening in the engine and which causes the bike to vibrate a lot more. So that's something that I'm going to have to get used to is just the rumble of the, of the engine, uh, the handlebars vibrating, but I, I tend to sort of like it. The fourth thing that you guys are probably wondering, was it worth it? Hell yeah, it was worth it. Dollar for dollar, it's probably one of the cheapest ways to actually increase the horsepower on the Iron 83. I know that it has an upfront sticker cost of about eight, nine hundred dollars and plus, depending on what kind of kit and options that you get. But if you think about the added gains to the horsepower and the torque, it's actually pretty economical. So it's definitely worth it to me. I think it's going to make me enjoy riding the Iron 83 much more and much longer. The next thing I wanted to talk about, which you guys are probably wondering, is can it keep pace with bigger bikes? Now, full disclosure, I haven't ridden with uh, other other guys or bikes, but I don't think I'll have trouble keeping up just because of the available torque. The only place where I might have trouble is beyond 85 to 90 miles per hour, but I'm, I'm rarely in that range. Next topic that I wanted to cover is how does it feel on the highway? So again, you know, I haven't taken it on the highway yet. I'm still going through my break-in period, but there were some stretches where I hit 60 to 70 a few times and it felt insanely smooth and comfortable. Uh, if you guys have ridden the stock 83 and get past 60, I think the comfortable range for an 83 is around like 50 to 60 to 65 maybe. That's where it kind of wants to cruise. But now that range is increased where I think the bike will be comfortable cruising at about anywhere between 50 to 75, maybe even 80, although I haven't hit 80 yet. It didn't feel sketchy or dangerous when I was riding the 883 stock and I would hit the highway, you know, past 65 or so. 
it starts to feel like you're really pushing the limits of your bike and that in itself feels sketchy just because you know when you need a little bit more power you don't have it available or it, it might take a while for the uh, for the bike to deliver it to you so let's say you're cruising at around like 65 and you really uh, need to get past the car just to you know hit the exit you're really gonna have to think that out on a stock 83 you're gonna have to plan it out you can't just you know push the throttle and zoom past the car you'll have to kind of map out okay maybe I'll let this car pass me then I'll get behind uh, just because you don't have that available power. But with a 1250 kit, that's a whole different story. You have all the available power. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have to be so methodical when I'm on the highway. I can just, if I need to get past someone, there. You know, just twist the throttle and I'll be able to do that. So I, I, I love that confidence that the 1250 kit brings to you. Just knowing that you have that available power to push in any sort of circumstance. And that's primarily the reason why I got the 1250 kit. Alright, so that, that was a big one. Uh, the next one I wanted to cover is 1250 versus 1275. I covered this a little bit in my previous video, but um, and this is this is personal for me. I I don't think it was worth paying an extra couple hundred dollars just to get about six to eight percent increase in in torque, and you get maybe two to three percent increase in in horsepower. For me, like that's where you know I drew the line. I said, hey, 1250 kit, you know, uh, that's plenty for me. If I need to get more horsepower down the line, at that point, I'm just going to upgrade to a bigger bike, you know, and just call it a day. I'm not about trying to eke out every ounce of juice available on this bike. I just wanted enough power to get me through different circumstances and situations, hairy situations that, uh, you know, that would allow me to be a little bit more comfortable on this bike. The next point is why Hammer and other brands? Did you consider other brands? So when I was doing my research, Hammer was just the most recommended. They came up the most uh, in forums and Facebook groups, in, in different chats with other 883 uh, owners. And so that says a lot. You know, I think they have a reputation. The other kit that I was thinking about was the NRHS performance kit. Uh, they had another kit that was about $1,000, but that was like their top of the line with everything, with the cams as well. And I was heavily considering that, and I almost placed the order. Well, I actually did place the order for it, but they only had um, silver color in stock, and that's just not going to go. That's just not going to match with my bike. So I went with Hammer Performance. Um, I feel really good about you know the decision that I made. I think they. I like the fact that a lot of users have kind of gone through this process, and I was able to watch a few videos to try to watch out for different things, how to break in the bike, etc. So I feel like they have a good track record. It's one of the reasons why I went with Hammer. That's most of it, but uh, I wanted to also talk about downsides, which I only have really one or two. So the first downside, you know, especially in the summer, along with the sound, the you know the louder sound and more vibration, there's just a lot more heat coming from the engine. I could be wrong. You know, I didn't do any technical um, technical measurements, but just a feeling sitting on the bike. Uh, I can tell that there's a lot more heat and it takes a lot longer, I feel like, for the bike to cool down just because there's a lot more heat. In the summer, that can be kind of brutal. So I've been trying to stick with mostly night riding, but still I could, I could sense that there's a lot more heat. That downside will be a, probably a plus in the fall and winter time where I'll be able to maybe be able to ride, or ride the bike in the colder, uh, colder weather. But for now, it's a downside. Another downside is just this break-in period, man. Like, the break-in instructions from Hammer is a, a mile long. You know, the first time you have to start the engine for 10 seconds, shut it off, let it cool down. Then you start it again. You know, um, let it run for 20 seconds, shut it down, cool down. Like, and you repeat that a few times. And the first night I tried to ride the bike, I was only able to get two miles in because uh, I was constantly shutting it down and like letting it cool. It's what they recommend. It's what Hammer recommends you do when you break in the engine because they said that heat is a major uh, factor in engine damage. So you want to make sure that the engine cools down completely before you start riding it again. And even during the break-in periods, you know, I would I would stop, uh, get some gas, you know, get some water for myself, let the engine try to cool as much as possible, and I would do that for about 20 miles, and then get back on, ride it some more, tune the bike. Uh, and then stop after another 20 miles. So like this this uh, break-in period is, is long and painstaking, 
but hopefully after this 500 mile breaking period, it'll be fully worth it. So those are my initial thoughts. There are about nine points. Um, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. I do also do want to do a separate video on what the process is like tuning because that's a whole ordeal in itself. Um, I had initially thought that the only thing that you need to do is just buy the DinoJet PowerVision tuner and then they can somehow like tune the bike with it. I was wrong. Uh, you actually need to download your original tune to the PowerVision then send that to your laptop, your PC laptop. You can't use a Mac. Uh, so there's like this whole ordeal with it. Then you send that file to Hammer and then the Hammer modifies that file to, and then sends it back to you. Then you go like basically reverse the process and like send it back to your bike. That was very confusing to me because the information is not all in one cohesive place. They sent you to a few different videos. And so I was like toggling back and forth. And I didn't know ahead of time that DinoJet PowerVision only works with the software that, that is available on a PC. So uh, if you're savvy enough with a Mac, you can download some programs like Parallel that are run uh, Windows. But if you're not computer savvy, I would maybe recommend uh, getting a buddy who has a PC that can help you do this process. But I'll create a separate video for that. That might be helpful for some of you. But all in all, I'm still really excited. I have about, you know, like I said, uh, a couple hundred miles on the on the break-in period. Uh, I'll be really excited. You know, I have to change the oil after the 500 mile, mile break-in period. But uh, after that, man, I'll do another video once I have had the proper break-in and I've had the chance to really just kind of experience what the kit has to offer. Because right now it can only hit about 4,000 RPM. So that's not, that's enough to get me through a lot of traffic scenarios like, you know, the ones that I'm riding now. But um, to really get the power and the sense of the, the increased horsepower and torque I want to be able to throttle it past 4,000 RPM. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking around. If you guys enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. In the future, I will have more videos about the 883 with the 1250 kit, and I have some other videos on the way. So uh, subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.